What's up? This is Charlie Baltimore, one third of the BNB, and you're watching Posse TV, baby. I'm in it from a, a spiritual, emotional, you know, mental aspect. You know, the industry is is a is a beast in itself. So, you know, I just meant basically like, you know what I mean? You try to, to kill my spirit, or you know what I'm saying, emotionally damage me. Anything you throw at me. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna bounce right back up. So, hence, hard to kill is the title of this video. Trick Trick and myself are the, uh, you know, co executives of the label. So, it's, you know, it's our label. So, this is exciting for me because it's the first project I've ever put out on my own, you know, on my own label. So, um, you know, like I see, like, like as you already see out there, it's, I have a very strong team with me and behind me, you know what I mean? And it's just exciting and, and you know, humbling to be around such, you know what I'm saying, realness. I actually met uh, Trix, you know, like his his big homie, and they had a situation, a label situation, um, back you know a long time ago, and it dissolved for whatever reason, and they were looking to put it back together. So with me in play, you know what I mean. Everybody just got re inspired to really want to do it, and um, I took on executive position and it just went from there. You know what I mean. Trick put his project, his whole project on hold, just to executive produce my mixtape. So he's mixed all the records like. We just a family, man. It's it's a it's a great feeling. Uh, B and B stands for breaking major barriers, and the major means all kind of things. You know what I'm saying? It could be major barriers, and major labels, and you know the major is the the main component in the in the uh, you know what I'm saying what it what it um, signifies. So you know, with that being said, uh, I think we have a lot of barriers to break, and I think with next time this time next year you're gonna see that we broke them all. Well, it's my label, so <laughs> I'm gonna do everything I can to watch it grow and succeed. And so that's the, the main major difference, you know what I'm saying? I have complete creative control of my project, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's no rush job, it's no, okay, we gotta do this, we gotta do that. When it's done, it got done. I called my team and we put a whole plan in motion and that's what we doing at NYC today. I mean, back then I was a freshman, I was a rookie, so you know, it's definitely progressed because of all the great artists and great talent that I work with, you know what I'm saying? I Obviously, I've learned things along the way, and just as well as just me growing as a person, you know what I'm saying, with, with all of that um, in play, you know what I'm saying, I had no choice, or, or you know what I mean, it, it was inevitable that I was going to grow as an MC, as an artist, you know what I'm saying, and lyrically, which is, you know, basically, to me, that's my strongest suit, my strongest point is my writing. So uh, it's definitely um, progressed, you know what I mean? It's still progressing. I think all rappers should still be progressing forever and ever, you know what I'm saying, throughout their whole career. You should never just get stuck on one style or one, you know, um, format of rhyming. I have a film out right now called Living With No Regrets, um, and I have a film that I'm getting ready to shoot in October, as well as some other things I'm doing with the acting thing. Um, and then I'm going to put out an album, and then I'm going to fall back. We're going to work on Trick's album and Trick's projects, and then we both going to fall back and do, you know, the executive thing and focus on our up-and-coming artists. I mean, I always did poetry, and I always, you know, dabbled with rhyme, but I really started taking it seriously when I, uh, when I met the Notorious B.I.G., and, you know, he just inspired me and, and you know, kind of stayed on my head to write a rhyme every day, you know what I mean, to get better and better and better. And you know, at first I thought he was just joking around, but he was dead serious. So once I saw he was serious and you know, that he was really on it, you know, I started taking it a lot more seriously. And right before his death, um, we were gonna, we had a, a plan to start a group called The Commission. But unfortunately due to his death, we weren't able to, you know, have that come into play. So uh, his partner, when he passed on, um, basically just, you know, kept the ball rolling and signed me and um, Cameron as his first artist on his label. Obviously, you know, when someone dies unexpectedly and their death is untimely, there's plenty of things that you want to say, but, you know, I'm a firm believer in the afterlife, and I, I definitely believe when you pray and, you know, you speak to the other side, they, they can hear you. I believe that. You know, I don't know Kendrick personally, you know what I'm saying, but when I listen to the record, to me, he's not dissing anybody. He's just stating, you know what I'm saying, probably what every rapper thinks, you know what I mean? And I say I don't know, I don't know him personally so that people don't think, you know, I'm siding with him or anything of that sort. I'm just saying that from a lyrical perspective, I think that he just named dudes that he respects as artists, you know what I'm saying, and said, I'm trying to murder you dudes, which is something that probably all rappers think that, you know what I'm saying, every rapper wants to be the best at what they do. You know what I mean? I don't think he dissed anybody. I think it was more of, you know what I'm saying, a compliment than anything. 
But, you know, people take things different ways. That's just my take on it. I could be totally wrong. He might have had a whole different mind frame. But to me, he's just saying, yo, I'm trying to murder you dudes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all are dope. That's how I took it. I don't know. You know what I mean? I wasn't there when he made the record, so I don't know what he was thinking. But I, I didn't take, when I heard it, I, you know, everybody was going crazy. And I'm just like, okay, he's not dissing anybody. I mean, I think that female rappers are, for the most part, being represented fairly. You know, we're always going to be a minority because it's not that many female rappers. And it's a male-dominated industry. But I think there's something for everybody. You know what I'm saying? There's different variations and different flows and styles and some people are just lyrical some people are entertainers and that's awesome you know what I mean it's it's, it's definitely something for every you know age group and and everybody out there that that likes to listen to females rap we have a female rapper on our label as well from Chicago named Streets she's really dope she's also featured on the mixtape yeah I actually picked all the artists that we have signed currently so you know we definitely are always looking for talent but again um you know if I left it to the, you know, the CEO of the label, he'd sign everybody because he has a big heart and he just wants to give everybody a chance. But unfortunately, you know what I'm saying, from a business perspective, that's not the greatest move. So um, my vision for B&B is to keep it very boutique, you know what I mean, so that all the artists can get all the individual attention that they need. Because I feel as though every artist should have the same amount of attention, the same amount of, you know, our undivided attention as well. And with us being artists, that can get kind of tricky, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, this is question. Um, Fortunately, you know what I mean. I have a team that, you know, what I'm saying we keep it really family oriented, and anybody that we embrace, we embrace it for real. So as far as us looking for new talent, we definitely always are. But you just know you're gonna be, you're gonna have to go through some hoops. So we know it's, you know, what I'm saying you're official because we only want the realest of the real over here. Baby. I don't ever, you know, say I wish, you know, a person doesn't have to go through this, a person doesn't have to go through that. I think that obstacles and things are put in front of us to test our character and to, you know, make you stronger. You know what I'm saying? So even if at the time when it's going on, it seems like this is the worst thing that ever happened to you or, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, this is unbeatable or unbearable, you know what I mean? When you get through it, you're going to see that, you know what I'm saying, you're going to see whether obviously you were strong enough to deal with it or not. You know what I mean? So I think that um, I try not to take any bad experiences that I've dealt with in the past and you know, dwell on them. I try to build off them. You know what I mean? And that definitely defines your character and definitely shows who I'm saying who's real and who's faking out there. Hey, this is Charlie Baltimore. The new mixtape Hard to Kill will be out September 17th. Make sure you go cop that. It'll be available online and hard copy. You know what I'm saying? If you want to hit up b, b find me online. You know what I mean? We're always looking for new talent. And I just want to say love you to my whole b, &B team. They did a phenomenal job with my whole week, my press week, my mixtape. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to get down with some real mom efforts, you know what I'm saying? Come holler at b, &B.